Hey folks, today I'm going to tell you how to develop something, a new feature with the AI assistant Jessica. Jessica is an AI assistant that's specifically designed to work as a code developer and develop together with you. She's capable of doing many, many things, writing code, explaining the code to you, doing the refactoring, doing almost everything that would you delegate to a junior developer. So think about it as a junior developer, so to speak, that can do a lot of the task, read the best practices for your specific language and do a refactoring. We're going to start with installing the Jessica. You can go to the official GitHub repository and there is really one line uh, install command that you can copy, run it. Now, be sure to check the version. In this specific video, we're going to use version 2. You can either install the latest one, most likely not much have changed in then since since V2, or you can just tag along with whatever version you have. So let's get the ball rolling. I have this client. In fact, I'm going to show how I'm developing Jessica with that Jessica. And currently, if you ask just to do something with the files, she will print output directly in the terminal. So what I want it to do, I actually want it to start doing changes directly in the file. Uh, I have the main Go file where all everything effectively happens, where that's the file that process CLI comments from the user. And um, okay, so let me now use the comments. Jazz has subcommand file. File is effectively a comment that allows you to pass a physical file and what I wanted to do and the prompt what to do about it. What I'm planning to do right now, I want to introduce a new flag uh, that obviously resembles the logic of the rest of the flags and I want that flag to output result uh, to the file because currently if I run this file, uh, this command as you see on the screen, the result and the result will be the updated file with the changes I'm going to ask Jessica to do will be printed on the screen. So I actually have to copy paste it back to um, to the to the source code and this manual process. Obviously, I don't want to do it. So I want to introduce flag minus all, which is output, where I can specify a path to the file. Or actually, no, no, no. Let me uh, say overwrite, which will mean that uh, Jazz has to override the file that I'm giving as an input. I, I like that idea. So let me ask the following. I want you to add a flag uh, to the file command. Uh, flag should be uh, overwrite or dash o. Uh, if this flag is used instead of printing out uh, printing out results uh, to the std out, I want uh, I want the output to be written in the same file as given as input. Um, just replace everything in the input file with the output. No need to print anything to std out when this new flag is used. Okay. Let me see how it will work. Okay, so this is effectively a new code. Let me copy paste. And this is what I was speaking about. You see, it's introduced, it's outputs everything to your STD out, which is fine, but you have to copy paste. Now, You, we can see that we have changes. Let's look on the specific div. Okay, so this is a specific div, and this div is exactly when we asking just to do either or override, explain the factor. So it's a right place. 
Uh, and as you can see, she added the Boolean flag over right. As I ask her, minus or short right output and same in file instead of CCD out, I like the description. And uh, here's a logic. If I write a specified, a write file, file pass, byte answer, uh, and if obviously error, we return the error. Otherwise, we just print the answer, return new. I like it. And now let's give it a shot. Let's give it a try. I have this command build and install, which is actually going to do full build and it's going to install the latest version of JSIG in my system. So I actually can uh, test uh, this latest, uh, these latest changes. Now let me think about the functionality that I want to implement on top of this. Okay, so another thing that I want to add I want to add for the dialogue part of the uh, for the dialogue part that uh, Jessica can perform. I want it to have a system message. So when you uh, sending uh, you know, when you sending data to ChatGPT API, you can provide a system message that effectively designated as a special message designated for context. You can specify name of the assistant, what the assistant is doing. And I obviously been procrastinating to do it in quite some time because technically it's working fine, but it still would be nice to, to give a personality to, to the assistant. So what I'm going to do, you know, that my code is inside of the client.call. So here is a code that actually is speaking to the ChatGPT. First of all, I'm going to show you the explanation function. It's a special function just that can have a file as an input and explain to you what's going on in this file. And let's me use this feature. This is, by the way, a new feature. So you're actually not going to get it in the later version of Jessica V2. It will give, will be released only in V3. So you either need to compile everything from source code or wait until V3 is released. Or maybe you're watching this video when V3 is already out. In this case, you're fine. So let me give an input um, client and then I'm using E uh, short from explain. So now Jessica is going to read the file and explain to me that in the high level what's going on there. Okay, so there is a huge feature that's going to be developed uh, around the ability for the just to read all the files in the repository, including the hierarchy of the files. Stay tuned, for now this is only one file. Okay, so let's go and let's ask Jess to actually do the, the proper system uh, context setting for all dialogue messages. Method message. Uh, and random message. I want you to add a system message that sets, sets the context of the dialogue. It should be prepended as the first message. Uh, come up with proper context setting, but it should uh, convey the message that chat is AI assistant that helps to do joint developing. Uh, development uh, software uh, assistant name is Jess and overall come up with any additional context setting you think is uh, valuable for the task that I just described. Uh, in other words, think about Jess as your friend 
uh, developer with whom you do development. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. The whole idea that this time I wanted this to be in overwrite mode because I do want to overwrite the initial file. That's uh, what we just have developed as a feature together with you folks. Okay, so let's see if our feature works. So as you can see, there is some div here. Okay, so what did you do? Context message, create, con create new message. This is context setting message. Uh, system role name. You see, it's actually suggested we have a, a constant, but we actually don't. So let me go and create it. This is something that it expects you to create. I do have a constant and um, and inside of the models. Yeah. Oh, there is a system role name. Interesting. <laughs> you see, I didn't even know that. Uh, you are now chatting with Jess and a developer assistant who helps. Oh, that's, I, I honestly don't like them. Uh, there are several things that I actually don't like here. And uh, first of all, that it's maybe, maybe, okay. This is just one, uh, one line, but I would love it to extract uh, I would love it to extract this to a constant. So let me ask her to to do exactly that. To do exactly that, and after that, uh, and after that, we can actually we can move to the next task, final task for the day, playing with versioning. Okay, so. Uh, let me ask her to, can you extract a system context message that uh, been copy pasted in three places to a proper constant variable. Also, it sets context for the user. Um, actually, no, that I will fix myself. Let her just do the development job. I can do the rest. Okay, so let's see. Perfect, so system context message is now... I, I honestly don't like this specific context, but, 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 what you can you do? Okay, here we go. Uh, you're now chatting now, you are AI uh, developer, your name is Jess, you are an AI developer assistant who has the software development. Okay, that's fine. Let's keep it like this. Now, the third thing I uh, I want to do is to ask just how to extract the version. You see, we have version here, and I also have a version that I have to use when I do builds somewhere. We have a readme with install, and install is here. You see, it has a version. Okay, so let me try to ask Jess. In this particular case, I probably will have to ask her, but there will be no override. So I'm going to show her. I just want her to see the main file. So let me uh, show her main.go and let me ask her a question. Uh, there is a version there. How? Actually, no, this. So here is the thing. When, when this specific problem will show the file, but actually 
uh, going to ask just to generate the output file, which is important because in this particular case, I don't want to generate output file. So let me use another part of the of the JS. And since we did some changes, I want to use uh, to use development version. Let me rebuild again, build and install. So I'm going to do build and install, and after that. I'm going to use another uh, specific just command, which is uh, which is dialog. I'm going to say continue just. So in this particular case, I'm saying I want to continue dialog with a just, and this is a name of the dialog. Name of the dialog just for the sake of this keeping context. So you see, there is old messages that I chatted with just about. So she knows the context, and this is context about developing just herself. So let me ask a question. Uh, I have um, I have a version in my main Go file, uh, it is the version of the CLI. However, I also have a version uh, in the install.sh file that downloads a specific release uh, from GitHub. I also use version when I do release with git tag. How can I extract version? Uh, so there will be only one place that I need to update and version would be used in main dot go and in install the stage and uh, in the release shell command uh, to do git tag something like that that's effectively my question okay so let's see let's see what she can think of okay so let's see what's going on here okay you can extract version a separate file of uh, and have your install and release shell command read the version from the file. Let's create a new called version. Perfect. Let's do exactly that. So we're going to have version three. Uh, looks like this. Okay, that's the version number whether we want. Now let's update your scripts to read the version in the file. In main go, uh, it has get version. Let's go to main go. Uh, I just realized that I would love to have a separate, uh, separate, uh, I would love to have ability to automatically just apply this suggestion. This probably will be next step. Next step, uh, another, another feature request, so to speak. So my main goal, I'm going to have, uh, read version. Uh, and that makes sense now. Whenever version is used, have I already kind of don't like this because um, where is the final version will be in your install uh, for the release shell. I don't like that. So here's why I don't like this specific thing, because this file version will not be uh, on on in, in the system. So this means it will not be compiled. Let me ask just will not be compiled in the executable file. So this will not work when I distribute my package, or will it? Okay, while well, I was thinking, let's actually do the testing. Nothing prevents us actually to do the build because we already don't have a version here. 
So we actually can do build and install. Now let me go somewhere like TMP and set just V. Ha, you see, I know, obviously, because she tries to read file version, which is not there, which is obvious. Okay. <clears throat> so. Hilarious. Ooh, I like that. So you see, it's it says version. Uh, I like that. I really, really, really like that. I actually wasn't aware about this. I learned a new thing in Go today. So we'll have version unknown, right? So this, this thing is not required at all. Now we have here just version. I like that. I, I, I really didn't know that you can do that. Now, obviously we can go to our bash script. Uh, where is our build script? So this is our build. Side of the build, we will set. Okay, so you you're doing the version now. Now we can set this flag here. Uh, sorry, that flag is actually should go to build. So we have build. We will put flag here. I really want to simplify this, and I will will and I will simplify this, and I will show you how. Uh, why should I bother? Right uh, now we have a version. Uh, by the way. By the way, uh, let me have a file. Release.sh, which obviously will be this. Okay, so now I want I want to improve this. Like I, I, I don't like how how horrible this looks like. So uh, I'm going to test everything that just suggested me to do. But meanwhile, I'm going to say jazz file input file will be in this case uh, build a sage, and I'm going to say refactor, and I'm going to say overwrite, which means that she will refactor everything there according to her abilities to make it more readable and overwrite uh, directly in the file. And while she's doing that, I'm going to go and test uh, the thing with the version. So technically, I should be able to build and install. I'm going to build and install. This effectively will install it. Now I can go to TMP and I can test. Perfect. V3. Even though so now it's now it's compiled, it's working exactly as I just explained it will be. So let's go back, finish the refactoring, and let's see the result. And here we go. Build up, we has almost everything in place. Amazing, amazing. That's just amazing. That's all where I'm going to stop. Thank you for listening. We have implemented three feature with almost zero coding with developing assistant AI. Thank you, folks. Have a nice, nice day.